So Lee Kern is a Hollywood writer who worked on Borat 2, has been writing some really, really unhinged posts lately. Uh, he's been a prominent critic of Owen Jones, who frankly has written some defamatory comments about him. And seemingly, we are witnessing the radicalization of a man in real time. Owen Jones must not get away with this simply because his personality is comedically lame and invites instinctive mockery. He is actually a purveyor of wicked ideas that dovetail with the methodology of Holocaust denialism pushed by the far right. He shouldn't be given a pass by a media class that leans left, not true, simply because he is closer to you on the political spectrum. If he identified as right wing, there is no way you would welcome him into the mainstream. He is a grubby, cheap, faux intellect who seems to always lend his weight to bullying movements that camouflage themselves as righteous. Now, Lee, along with many others, have been accusing Owen Jones of a form of Holocaust denial, which is nothing short of disgusting, smearing someone who dares to speak out against a genocide. But this video isn't about Owen Jones or a particular Twitter spat. This is about the wider picture of the framing of this debate in, reg in regards to Israel-Palestine. Now, because Lee is a genuinely unhinged person, he is a really good example of how we allow atrocities to happen, which I think should be studied. So buckle up, because you're about to hear some deranged rhetoric. Gaza is a sociopathic society of racism. Cowards will raise their petticoats in our gassed horror that someone can call out the darling Palestinians who have been branded sweetheart victims by a deliberate campaign to facilitate their racism and shield them from criticism. But Gaza is a toxic society of racism and toxic intent. It is a murderous society. It is a foul Islamic version of what a KKK or Nazi society would be. Hate, murder, aggression are instilled in the population by their leaders. Their culture is as hermetically sealed as North Korea, and their heads are pumps full of racism and dreams of violence. Kindergartens, schools, media, mosques are all institutionally jihadist. Ordinary Gazans participated in the baby killing atrocities of October 7th. Ordinary Gazans support Hamas and have helped Hamas hide hostages. A 12 year old boy held hostage by Hamas was tortured. He was forced to watch footage of the Hamas massacres every day. If he cried, he was threatened by a gun, used as a form of torture in this instance. Uh, just before I carry on, all of this is un uh, unsubstantiated. None of this seems to be true. This just seems pulled out from his own head. It's, 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 it's crazy. It also indicates how Hamas have raised a generation of Palestinian child soldiers, how they are desensitized to violence and conditioned to stifle the normal human reactions of empathy and sadness at the suffering of others. People ask me how long was the October 7th atrocity planned. I say take the age of the oldest person who participated and it was the day they were born. From the day they were born, they were conditioned and taught to be racist and hate Jews. They were taught to celebrate violence. They were taught to worship death. They were taught to kill. This is how the demonic crimes of October 7th happened. After Hamas are defeated, there is an even longer battle to detoxify Palestine society of its sociopathic conditioning. Wow. Um, this is a deranged rant of someone painting the brush of the crimes of Hamas to all Palestinians. He is saying it starts in kindergarten. He's basically saying that Palestinian children are terrorists. An absolutely deplorable thing to say. I mean, I have less than contempt for this person. He is clearly a genocidal maniac. But this is bigger than an individual. The words of Lee are echoed by many, especially in the media and Israeli officials. And I'm not going to waste all my time on one pathetic individual, and it's not helpful either. Rather, I'm going to deconstruct the narrative at play here. So Hamas committed war crimes on the 7th of October. They are terrorists who are beyond purely uh, Palestinian liberation. However, just like the rise of ISIS, we all know that the West's bombing campaign became a recruitment tool for them. They didn't appear in a vacuum and neither did Hamas. So those that don't have a material analysis and resort to good guy, bad guy, are not only incredibly stupid, but are also racist. Lee and many others want to use the most extreme language when describing Hamas. They want you to think that Hamas would have existed anywhere, anytime. They want you to think that Hamas is a representation of Palestinians, that they are simply a barbaric community, whilst Israel is a beacon of light. They want you to think that states represent people and people represent states. It's a useful tool 
to recruit people to be pro-Israel. And anyone who isn't is disgusting, immoral, and terrorists. I honestly think, genuinely, that people who engage in this rhetoric see Israel as a population of white people versus the dirty, nasty brown Muslims. People like Lee want to oversimplify uh, and, and make it about a war between ideas, Israel good, Palestine bad. That functions as genocidal rhetoric. They'll pretend it's just about Hamas, I mean, unless you're Lee, who is openly saying it's all about Palestinians. When in reality, I think there's a whole lot of pro-Israel people who want to tarnish all Palestinians with the same brush. This is a way to justify the thousands of innocents being murdered by Israel, because to them, they all deserve it. Does Hamas want to kill all Jews? That's entirely possible. I don't know, but maybe. What I do know is that most Palestinians are like the rest of humanity, good people who just want to live. Now, I think Netanyahu wants to rid Palestinians off the face of the earth. I think his party does, most of the people in government, most of the IDF. But does that mean I think that all Israelis or all Jewish people think like that? I don't. And how could I even possibly know? It would just be an assumption, just as it is to call every single Palestinian a supporter of baby killing. Most human beings want the same, to improve their material conditions, to be safe and to be happy. The idea that certain communities and cultures have an innate, uh, violent, hateful ideology about them is racist. The idea is often predicated by Nazis and fascists that the white Christian nation is the moral one. Other places are just savages. That rhetoric has been used to justify awful, awful crimes, to justify mass killings. But it's not true. Think about all the horrible things our country has done, quite often in the name of Christianity. We used to have slaves. We used to have anti miscegenation laws. We used to punish those who were gay. So to look at other cultures and say, well, they are barbaric, we are civilized, is just ahistorical. All societies go through progression. And yes, there are societies that exist today who still have ultra conservative policies. But to say that is inherently due to people's race or culture is just flat out wrong. Now, I can say that I think. Western culture of liberalism, the freedom to do, say, love, what and who you like, which you know, we often breach those principles, is a better culture than others around the world where being queer is criminalized. However, I'm not saying it's because certain communities are always going to be immoral. Rather, progress happens at different times. The world doesn't move simultaneously. Plus, a lot of reactionary culture is forced upon the population. Most of the people are fighting against authoritarianism. Iran being a good example, there's a movement to liberate women against an oppressive state. Now, if it was inherent to particular people or people's culture, you wouldn't have a fight back. That's what I mean when I say that people are not states and states don't represent people. And that is what is happening with the narrative of Palestinians. People like Lee desperately want you to think that the people of Gaza are uniquely inhuman, that Hamas is a representation of them in order to justify the genocide of them. When instead, violence is often created through despair, through extremely poor material conditions. For 75 years, there has been an occupation of the Palestinian people. They are living in an open air prison. IDF soldiers killing men, women and children indiscriminately, shooting Palestinian journalists in the head, locking up teenagers for throwing stones. This isn't making excuses for the October 7th terror attack. This is explaining how and why it happened, and the circle of violence continues. When we look back at history, how we as a society allow genocides to happen, how the Holocaust took place, we are in disbelief. Well, this wouldn't happen today. None of us would idly sit by and allow such crimes against humanity to take place. You know, we have moved on as a species. We are more open and tolerant. But that's just not true. I mean, I, I get it now because. We have always let atrocities happen, and we are doing it again today. There is a genocide happening in Palestine, and just like history, we are allowing it to happen.